Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to continue our series talking about mouse events in C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms applications. And in a previous video, set of videos, we developed a simple application where we are plotting data in a chart. And we also looked at how we can do what you see here, animated strip lines. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about using the mouse scroll wheel to do what you see here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over part of this graph and I'm going to move my scroll wheel forward. And each time I do that, it zooms in on a particular spot. And as I zoom out, as I move the scroll wheel back, it automatically resets. And then I scroll in, scroll in, and then resets. And I can go over here and scroll in and it resets. So we're going to talk about how we can use the mouse scroll wheel to generate events that will allow us to modify, in this case, our chart or whatever else you want to do. You're basically setting up an event handler for when you scroll the mouse wheel and you can detect whether it's going forward or back and do whatever you want. So let's take a look at our C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application and see how we can do this. So here is our application and our design basically got a chart and some buttons. Now, um, previously what we did is we looked at the mouse up and mouse down and mouse move events associated with this chart. We mentioned that each control has its own events associated with it. So you have to make sure that you're selecting the right events. If you're going to, for example, deal with a chart, you need to get events that are associated with the chart. And if we select this chart and go over here to the properties and select this lightning bolt, you can see all of the events associated with that chart. And before we looked at the mouse click, down, enter, hover, leave, and move, and mouse up. But if we're going to do a scroll event, there is no mouse wheel event listed in these events. And that's one of the challenges with the mouse wheel events. You have to basically do it manually. So you're going to have to set up an event handler to grab the event and also you're going to have to subscribe that event handler to the mouse wheel event. So we're going to show you how to do that. So here's our application that we've developed previously and really the only thing we have to look at in this application is the method that we set up the chart. Now again we're going to assign a mouse wheel event associated with that chart. So we have to make sure we are associating it with the chart. So when we configure the chart, we're setting up the line, the series, and everything else. But we've added down here a line where we are subscribing to the chart1.mousewheel event. So that is a control.mousewheel event. It occurs when the mouse wheel moves while the control has focus. So again, it's very, very important that when you use this, your chart, in this case, has focus. So we're going to look at that a little bit later. Using this plus equals, we are assigning an event handler called chart1 underscore mouse wheel that we're going to develop down here. We're subscribing that to the chart1 mouse wheel event. Again, that event isn't shown in the properties for the chart. That's why we have to do this line of code to subscribe it to that mouse wheel event. So when we add this, now what we have to do is we have to go down and add an event handler manually. And here is the mouse wheel event handler. So we're going to have to type in private void chart1 underscore mouse wheel object space sender comma mouse event args e. And once we have that typed in, uh, we can add this code that's basically going to do what we saw with the chart. It's going to allow you to scroll in, or when we scroll back, it's going to automatically reset. So this has an object sender, which means the control that has sent this mouse wheel event. So what we're going to do is we're going to say it's a chart that sent this. So we're going to say the sender is a chart, and we're going to define it as a chart called chart. And then what we're going to do is we are going to develop a shorthand so we don't always have to type out chart.chart areas axis x, because we're going to be dealing with the x axis with this. We're going to modify the x-axis of the chart based on the scrolling. So we're just going to call that x-axis instead of having to type all this stuff out. And that is an axis. 
We're also, as we talked about in a previous video, we're also going to set the format of the numbers in the x-axis because when you scroll, it automatically gives you a whole lot of decimal points and it's kind of ugly. So we're just going to set the format as 0.0. .0. You can do whatever you want. Uh, if it's a date time, you can set it to whatever the date time. We're also going to set a zoom scale factor. And that's just a number we're going to use to say, okay, when I click forward on the mouse wheel, if I scroll forward one stop, it's going to zoom in by a factor of four. So it's going to divide the time scale by four to tell you how much it wants to zoom in. And then we're going to do the zooming. It's basically just going to be a try catch. And if there's an error, it's just going to ignore it and move on. So the try is going to do two things. If the scroll wheel is scrolled even one step backwards, we're automatically going to reset the zoom back to the normal uh, scale of the x-axis. So the thing that tells us how much we have scrolled is the event args, because this is a chart, it's going to tell us in the event args E dot delta, which gives a signed count of the number of detents the wheel has rotated. So it basically tells you how many notches you have scrolled. And if it's less than zero, which, which means you've scrolled backwards, that means you are trying to reset it. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the x-axis. It's called the scale view. And we're going to do a zoom reset. And that's very nice uh, method. It's just going to reset the x-axis to the normal axis and, and get rid of any zoom. Now, if it's positive, which means we're trying to zoom in, if it's greater than zero, we're scrolling forward, then we have to figure out how much we want to scroll forward and set up a new minimum and maximum value for the x-axis. So we're going to say that the x-min is x-axis scale view, view minimum, and that tells us what the existing minimum and maximum of the axis is. So the x-axis min is this, and the x-axis max is view maximum. So that's the existing when we scroll it. Then we're going to have to divide those by the scale factor to come up with a new x minimum and maximum that we can assign to the axis to scale in. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the start value of the zoomed range by getting the x-axis value corresponding to the pixel position of the mouse cursor and subtracting one quarter of the total x range, which is why we had the scale factor of four up here. It's going to be one quarter of the total range. So if the total range is, say, for example, zero to 10 seconds, which is a range of 10, one quarter of that is two and a half. So to obtain the start and finish x values of the zoomed range, we add and subtract two and a half to the x axis value corresponding to the present mouse cursor pixel position. So we're just going to, you know, figure out the new range and apply that to the x-axis value. However, as we mentioned before, when we scroll, it's going to get the cursor position, but it's going to have to convert that to a corresponding x-axis value. So if we hover our mouse over this position, the method is going to have to take the x-pixel position and map that or convert that to what the x-axis value is, which in this case is about one and a half. So it's going to have to do that conversion for us to tell us what is the corresponding x-axis value. And that's what this is going to do. Uh, we're going to use the pixel position to value, and that will allow us to come up with a new x start and x finish value that we can zoom into. So the equation is going to be x-axis pixel position to value. So it's going to take the location dot x presently minus x max minus x min over 4. So we're going to subtract one quarter of the range. And that's going to be the new x start. Same with the x finish. We're going to take the x-axis pixel position to value, take the location dot x, and then add one quarter of the range. And that's going to give us the finish. So once we've got the x start and x finish, we can use the x-axis scale view zoom and feed it what our new x start and x finish positions are, what the values are for a zoomed in x start and x finish, and that will zoom it in. 
So each time we scroll in, it's going to come back and do that again. And it's going to take the present view minimum and view maximum, which if you do it the second time, it's going to be the zoomed in value. So each time we do it, it's going to increment and it's going to get more and more zoomed in. So that's basically it for the scroll wheel. It's pretty straightforward. However, you have to keep in mind, you have to subscribe to this chart1.mousewheel event using this subscribe line, and then you have to generate this chart1.mousewheel event handler and fill in the code. Now, one thing we talked about is we have to make sure that if we're going to hover over this and zoom in and zoom out, we have to do it when this chart has focus. It's the active control. And we said that if we select this form and hit the tab key, you can see suddenly it highlights this start button. And if I hover over this and scroll in and out, it does nothing. If I hit the tab key again, it goes to the pause. This chart in both cases is not the active control. It's this pause button or the start button. And I can hover over this, I can click on it, I can do everything but it's not going to scroll in. I hit it again. Now it goes to the exit. I still can't do it. If I hit tab again, now this is the active control. It has focus and I can hover, scroll in, scroll out. So again, you have to make sure that you have focus in your control if you're going to use any of these mouse events and especially this mouse scroll wheel. So that's something to keep in mind using the tab key to make sure you have focus. Uh, you can also do that in your code. Make sure you've got focus. Uh, in our case, we're already working on the chart, so we know it has focus, but um, keep that in mind. So that's it for the mouse scroll wheel events. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.